how do you deal with negative criticisms of your very personal art when you're actively putting that art out there? That's what we're going to talk about today in this vlog that I'm making for you guys. Um, before I get to that, just want to remind you that the Putty Tribe doors are open today. So if you are looking for more multi-potentialites in your life, for advice, accountability, friendship, come check us out at theputtytribe.com. It's a really warm and wonderful and creative community. Um, and you'll meet lots of amazing other multipods in there. So, criticism. Oh my gosh. Um, lately, I have been putting my work out into the world for feedback. I'm talking about the television pilot script that I wrote. I've been working on the script for a couple years now. It's personal. Um, I've done several revisions. I, I feel really good about it. And so a few months ago, I started pitching it. I started, you know, calling on whatever contacts I have with people who might be tangentially related to the television industry. I've been submitting the script in different screenwriting competitions. I went to a conference in June and I had a few meetings, a few pitch meetings. Um, I've just been putting my work out there, getting feedback, revising the script, um, and it's been a bit of a roller coaster ride. And I think this is something that a lot of people who work in different artistic fields, especially ones where there are gatekeepers, a lot of people can, can relate to this. So I want to just talk about my experience. Um, so I get feedback that is very, very positive, and I get some feedback, different, different people, um, that is very, very negative. Uh, I applied, or I didn't apply, I signed up for this site called The Blacklist, where you can pay to get an evaluation. And the first time I did this, the evaluation was very, very positive. Um, the person clearly like loved my show. It made me feel amazing. And uh, because my grade was so high, I won two additional free evaluations. Well, the second evaluation that came in <laughs> was horrible. It was like, it, it was like, the person just completely hated my script. And, um, you know, the first one was all like, oh, the characters are amazing. This feels really realistic. Um, and then the second, the second evaluation was like, the characters don't make sense. The plot doesn't make sense. And so I kept doing this. I kept, kept kind of getting more and more evaluations and more feedback. And I noticed this would happen. Some people just totally the show totally jived with them. They loved it. They loved the characters. Um, they loved the issues that, that the script explores. Other people didn't get it at all. <laughs> they were like, there's no story here. <laughs> like, there's no inciting action. Like, this, you know, and I just felt like people weren't seeing what I could see or what, what the people who loved the script could see. Maybe they weren't the right audience. I'm not sure. But you know what? those negative critiques, they hurt. Like, we're told that art is subjective, that when you get feedback, you should take the helpful stuff and just forget, ignore the rest. But you know what? The rest still stings. Like, especially when it's something very personal that you put a lot of yourself into. If someone doesn't like it, or worse, doesn't get it, like, ah, that sucks. And maybe it's just that I am a particularly sensitive person. I'm like an INFJ, you know, I, I take things pretty personally. But um, I think that this is pretty common. And so I want to talk a little bit about how I've dealt with the negative feedback. And, um, and then I want to ask you how you deal with it in, in the comments of this, of this post. So one thing I've learned is that sometimes there will be a kernel of truth. You know, the, the haters, I'm just gonna call them haters, the, the people who don't like my show, um, they'll say things like, there's no plot here. And that's not very helpful. But one of the really positive reviews had some constructive criticism. And in that constructive criticism, they were like, you know, you could bring in some of the conflict earlier in the script. Like you could set it up a little bit earlier so that I see it coming when they get into, when the two characters get into a big fight near the end. Like, 
you know, make life a little bit harder for your protagonist at the beginning. And I was like, yes, like that is advice I can work with. And maybe that will solve this problem of there not being any plot. Like maybe that's what the, the haters were sort of expressing, but they weren't expressing it in a way that, that led me to any action. Like they weren't giving me anything concrete or specific. Um, so if you hear something again and again in the negative feedback, and there's like a something in the positive feedback or the more constructive feedback that sort of like hints at what that feeling might be that they were expressing, like that's something to look at. But there are other times when the negative critiques, they would say something that I just totally disagreed with and that the positive feedback also disagreed with. Like the use of voiceover was a big one where, yeah, voiceover is used a lot in teen dramas. My show is a teen drama. But, and it can be a crutch, it can be really cheesy, but when done correctly, it can really give you a sense of what the character's feeling and help you feel a lot more connected with the protagonist. Like, I've studied a lot of teen dramas, and I feel very strongly about voice, I have a lot of thoughts on voiceovers, and I feel really good about the choices that I made to use them and how I use them. And the positive reviewers, the people who liked my script, really liked the voiceovers, and the people who didn't like it thought they were, they were a crutch, basically. They thought, like, you know, this is overdone. Um, and I just got to throw that, throw those comments away because I, I think they're wrong. And it's a matter of taste. And that's it. All this is so subjective. But, like I said, it doesn't mean that it doesn't sting. It doesn't hurt when someone doesn't like your thing. Even though you know intellectually, like, not everyone can like it. So um, that's one thing I've done is kind of look for little kernels of, that, of truth that are reflected in both the negative and the positive feedback um, and try and forget the rest. Um, another thing that I've found helpful is to just kind of focus, refocus on the work itself. So instead of thinking about like how your work is perceived in the world to these people, like if possible, just write, write something new, write a new, well for me, a new scene, maybe from a future episode with the same characters, like just get back into what you love about the, the process of creating whatever it is you're creating. Um, and that can be really helpful to just remember like, it's not really about what all these other people think. Yeah, that stuff matters, particularly in some fields, but what really matters is the fun that you have and the meaning that it creates for you in your life when you're doing the work itself. So um, refocus, yeah, refocus on the work. Get back into it if you can. Um, and then surround yourself with people who believe in you. Like I've got a good, I've got a lot of, a lot of buddies and a lot of um, colleagues that see things in me that I don't always see in myself. And um, if you can get around people like that and people who see your vision and what you're trying to do and think that you're awesome and talented, that can be a really nice antidote to some of the negativity that comes in from those critiques. People who usually don't know you at all. Um, you know, if you're looking for more people to kind of cheer you on and support you, I've already mentioned the Putty Tribe, but really it's a really amazing resource for multi-potentialites who are putting themselves out there and working on different projects. Um, and then, you know what? I just want to give you permission to like feel the hell out of your feelings. And if, you know, like if, if you get a really good critique, if you get really positive feedback, like feel that, really feel that and, um, like celebrate. And if you get a shitty review, it's okay to feel like crap for a while. Sometimes there's just nothing you can do about it. Um, and I don't like this advice that's like, oh, just, you know, like brush it off, whatever, don't waste your time. It's like for a lot of us, that's really hard to do. And you just gotta like feel crappy for a while and it will pass. And I will say, I've been doing this for several months now, and it gets easier. I do think my script is better now, having gone through this process, but like, I know what to expect now. If, 
I don't I didn't expect my show to be so polarizing but for some reason it is and I know that if a review comes in it's either gonna be like a rave review or horrible and I know what the hor people who don't like it are gonna say and it's not a surprise anymore and I'm like okay like maybe you're not the right audience maybe there's something here but it doesn't hurt quite as much and I'm a finalist in a couple screenwriting competitions so I know that there's I've just gotten more confidence in the project and in myself and I think that as you go through this process of getting feedback and revising your work um, you stop being so your mood stop being so reliant on the either the positive validation or the negative comments and you just become a little bit more even keel at least that's I'm finding that a little bit and I'm hoping that will become more and more true because I think there's gonna be a lot more pitching in my future um, whether it's you know this project or another project um, and of course you know we hear all these stories about people who got rejected again and again. A lot of gatekeepers said no, and then the right person said yes. The right person saw their vision, and then it was like a smash hit, bestseller. Like, we hear these stories. So tenacity is important. You can get negative feedback. You can feel your feelings. It's going to sting. It's going to suck. But you keep moving forward. That's what's most important, because all it takes is one person, or a handful of people in my case. Um, so those are my rambly tips <laughs> about uh, for putting your very personal art out into the world. And now I'd like to hear what you think and um, how you deal with kind of the roller coaster of emotions as you're putting your work out there and making it better and what advice you listen to and what you disregard. Um, share in the comments below and um, I hope to see some of you in the Putty Tribe community in the next couple days. We've got some cool stuff coming up this month. There's going to be a whole uh, NaNoWriMo accountability thing. We've got all of our usual events and huddles and um, a few surprises. So uh, I hope you're having an awesome day and um, I'll see you guys later.